In this webcast, we're going to take a look at carbocations within reactions and also introduce a new elementary step. When carbocations are intermediates in reactions, they're going to be high energy, and these carbocations can rearrange themselves to form a more stable carbocation. And we've seen from our list of the seven classes of reactions that a rearrangement is just a change in the bonding connectivity. So that's all this step's going to be. This is known as the 1-2-R step, or the 1-2 rearrangement. Whenever a 1-2-R step is going to occur, there's going to be a pi-type interaction between a filled sigma orbital and an empty A orbital. That A orbital is going to be that carbocation, and that sigma orbital is going to be a neighboring sigma bond. The reason it gets the numbering 1-2-R is that the sigma bond on atom 1 will migrate over to atom 2 and this is going to be sideways overlap, always be sideways overlap, therefore giving a pi-type interaction. And this elementary step involves simultaneous sigma bond breaking and sigma bond making. Now there are three different types of 1-2-R steps that we'll typically see in organic chemistry. One of them is going to be a hydride shift, so when this Y group here is a hydrogen, we're actually going to move the entire hydride from atom 1 to atom 2. We can also see a methyl shift where we're moving and migrating a methyl group from 1 to 2. And also we can see a ring expansion, so we can see a carbon-carbon bond expanding the ring to release ring strain. Now one important thing to note here is that we can only do a 1-2-R step on adjacent atoms. It's 1-2 for a reason. We're not going to be jumping over other atoms to do a 1-3 or a 1-4 rearrangement step. It's only going to be a 1-2. And if you were to see what may look like a longer shift, it's actually just successive 1-2 shifts taking place. So in the example we see here, it's just this secondary carbocation undergoing a 1-2 shift form this secondary carbocation, which undergoes another 1-2 shift to form the tertiary carbocation on the far right. Now this shift is only going to occur if we're forming a more favorable product than what we started with. And a tertiary carbocation is going to be more stable than is a secondary carbocation. And that's why this situation was able to occur. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what the 1-2-R step is going to look like. And you'll get much practice with the 1-2-R step in many of our practice problems.